What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I have a really cool idea. I just purchased some new Adidas shoes. I did a commercial at home not too long ago and you guys absolutely loved it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create another commercial at home using DaVinci Resolve as our editor. Let's get into it. First couple shots I wanna get is the shoe floating. So I figured the best way to do that would be use fishing line. Uh, I got this fishing line from Walmart. Uh, it was only like a couple bucks. I, it's only 15 pound, uh, which I didn't need much more than that because it's just a shoe. Um, and I am gonna be using a C-stand to hang this to it uh, to get these shots. Luckily for me, this shoe has this little loop in the back. So I'm just gonna try to get the fishing line uh, right through that and uh, tie it, gaff tape it, whatever will work best. We'll, uh, we'll see. So I added a little kicker in the corner of some harsh blue lighting. Uh, I'll probably do a couple takes with the blue and then probably do some just standard white. I do think I am set up enough to do a couple takes it's really my best advice for you guys when you're shooting this kind of stuff. Do a couple takes, see how it looks, build from there. A lot of the shots that I'm doing, uh, I'm just experimenting. I'm seeing if it looks good. Uh, I have not done really any shoe commercials before ever. After loading all that into the computer and testing some of the shots out, I realized I was having some problems, uh, mostly with the rotoscoping of the shoe, specifically when it's hanging down and turning. Uh, I was just gonna mask, rotoscope it out, and then change the background, which I can still do, but the problem is I have so many projects stacked up on my plate uh, it's taking way too long for me to even get this video done. So we're going to try a different method just for that specific shot of it turning. We're gonna change to some green screen, blue screen technique. Uh, that way we can kind of mix it up a little bit. I will be rotoscoping some of the other stuff out, but that's why I'm doing one of those shots specifically just on green screen and the others aren't. The main thing you wanna get with a green screen is the most even light you can across it so you don't have super hot spots. Again, I could do this with that dollar cardstock like I did in the other video. It will work, but I've needed a pretty good size green slash blue screen. This one's a reversible on both sides. I'll have a link for it in the description below. I got it on Amazon for like 40 bucks. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not pay attention to the dimensions. I did not realize it was like seven feet tall. So it is really, really big. Uh, specifically for my office, but if I ever need it for any other work, this will work really good. So I just finished the final edit. Uh, I actually think it turned out really cool. I'm really happy with it. Uh, before I show it to you guys, warning, if you are someone that is prone to seizures from flashing lights or anything like that, I just wanna give you warning in the next 10 to 15 seconds, it's gonna be kind of flashy. Um, so just warning. Uh, for the rest of you guys, enjoy, here you go. So I was really just going for something fast, poppy, just something I could be on Instagram, Twitter, really anything that was just under 10 seconds is all I was really going for. Now, normally I don't pick the song first. Um, it depends on what I'm editing, but sometimes I do. For this, I jumped inside Artlist. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate with Artlist, but if I was not, I would still be using their service because I think it's phenomenal. This is not an ad for them. They did not sponsor this episode, but I do have a link down in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. Very rarely am I ever putting a song in something that's not being chopped up. I'm always chopping stuff up to make it fit to what I need. So you can see if I close down um, all of these except for the bottom two, I have the ink underneath right here and then I have a video clip right here uh, set to overlay. If I do that back to normal, you can see this is the original shot of the shoe just spinning. I could have went in, I could have masked around this whole shoe and made it look really good. I didn't want to do that for this thing. I wanted to have multiple layers. So the best way to do it was to set it to overlay. I thought it looked really good with the ink pouring in. It's just kind of in there. It's just visually barely in there. And then the next layer, I used the shoe that was floating above that. I did another shot right here of the same thing just on a gray, but I set this one to multiply and you can see 
that I actually did mask around it. If I go into the color page, you can see I did just a dirty mask, uh, just went around it. The shoe doesn't even move. It's just a stagnant shot. If I go back into the edit page and locate this right here, you can see this is just a stagnant shot. The only thing I did was play around with the lighting a little bit, so I figured that would work. So what I did with this shot specifically is over here under the transform is I messed with the position. So I had it kind of moving in a little bit. If we kind of just scrub through it a little bit, you can see that it's kind of panning over. So I kind of faked that the camera was moving. And then if we hop to the next clip, you can see all I did was put the ink above it this time. And I set the ink to a different composite mode right here. Uh, I set it to difference. You can play around with it. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And then underneath, uh, I just left it on normal. I didn't do anything. And all I did was move it to a little bit of a different spot. It's a little bit centered here. And I think I zoomed in and moved it over a little bit. So it wasn't nothing over the top. For that whole breakdown right there, all I did was really go through and change to the beat and reverse things, invert a few shots, really just kind of trying to change it up so your eyes kept bouncing around and looking for what the next thing was. Now let's talk about that hero shot with the shoe turning and floating in the air. I use that almost in every shot of this because it turned out so well. I loaded it inside of Fusion and I added a Delta keyer. Uh, I clicked on Media N1, hit Shift Space Bar. I looked for Delta keyer right there, added it, grabbed this little eyedropper and it will key it out. Now you can click on the third tab and you can kind of mess with the threshold, which sometimes you need to just to fine tune it a little bit. So on the previous at home commercial I did, I wound up keying it out in the color tab. And a lot of people commented and said, you weren't really keying it out. You were just using the color picker and that's not really the right method, which again, that is another way you can do things. Of course, I do think the Fusion method is a lot better, but a lot of people's computers can't handle Fusion, so that is kind of a quick and dirty way just to do a green, blue screen, whatever, in the color page. So after I had everything keyed out, I didn't have to keyframe anything. Uh, you can see I have a little bit of the wire up here at the top, so the quickest way to do that without having to mask anything is I went to the crop and I just messed with the top a little bit just brought it down just a little bit to cover that up right there because i knew the shoe wasn't moving no one was really going to notice that little bit right there i then right clicked on it went to retime controls and i went through and i added speed ramps i'm not going to dive into speed ramps if you guys want to know more about that i will put a link in the description below to another video i did uh watch that one over then i jumped over here in the transform in the edit tab and i wound up just messing with the zoom making a little smaller, rotating it, uh, and really just keyframing and going to town and just making it look different as it was rotating and spinning. If we jump back to the timeline, you can see on some of these shots, I actually tripled the shoe and all I did was click it, uh, hold option on a Mac and lift it up and I just brought in another shoe and over here in the inspector, you can move it around however much you want. I don't need four, that's a bit much. So we'll get rid of you. Uh, same thing, some of these shots, I just rotated it differently. Uh, on here, I messed with the aspect ratio just by making it bigger, zooming it in and out, uh, really just playing with it to the music. The last shot, which is probably my favorite as the shoes flying by and reveals the Adidas logo, is actually a lot simpler than you think it is. So I have two shoes obviously here. One is stacked on top of the other. Uh, and then all I did was grab it and I just moved it in position where I thought looked good. Uh, so it kind of looked like they were both being thrown and one was ahead of the other just rotating out. Uh, and I just, I think I inverted one or something just to make it not look like it's the same. If you actually pay attention, these are both the same shoe, which I think is the right shoe. Um, so it, it really doesn't matter. I wasn't going to put up another shoe and rotate it in front of the green screen for a five second piece. And I actually wound up right clicking on it and going to a new fusion clip. So it was keeping all that information everything inside of it so it's making it like it was a new clip i then loaded it inside fusion to create the mask all i did was bring in the image i connected it to a transform node then connected it to a merge node to my tree i then added a polygon to the image and i went through and i keyframed the mask basically just to follow around the shoe 
uh, and just softened it up. If you actually hop back into the edit page, you can see at times it's not the cleanest mask. If we zoom like way in there, you can see it's kind of bleeding in on it. Would it have looked okay to just have that logo pop up on the screen or been on top? Sure, it would have looked fine, but I think it just adds a little extra something when that shoe's flying and then the logo's revealed. It kind of catches you off guard like, oh, there's the logo, that's kind of cool. There you go, guys, that's how I created this shoe commercial at home. I had a lot of fun, I learned a lot. That's all what it really comes down to is just experimenting and figuring it out. If you guys are interested on some of the techniques that I did not dive into too much, they will be in the description below. A lot of these videos, I dive into way more detail on some of these effects. If you guys are new here, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below, say, hey, what's going on? How's your mom? How are you doing? Subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll catch you next time. Peace.